swayed by public opinion. Right. If somebody comes in, I, I like those people when they ask, are you a believer? You bet I'm a believer. I believe in Jesus Christ. They're not ashamed to say that. Right. You know, some people are so timid. Yeah. You know, they're so timid about God. Well, I tell you what, we're not timid about God. Because right. the, the, why, why? You know what? Like if, if, if you, when you're in a relationship, you, you know, if you love that person you're in love with, Facebook. 
open and get wider and wider and wider. And I can't express, express enough the love of this church and the love from my mother and my grandmother that came over here and all of you guys have taught me and I thank you immensely. Thank you all, man. Amen. So pretty soon, I should have Jane tell it, because she, she started to say something to Grandma, and she started crying. And so what's the matter? Well, she has anxiety attacks. And if anyone's ever had an anxiety attack, they're the most frightening thing. When you're especially 17, you know, she feels like she's dying. She's, you know. Mm -hmm. So, uh, boy, you talk about the Lord opening the door and yeah. having her full attention. Yeah. So it was just the three of us, and we got to spend well, a half hour, 45 minutes and telling her, you know, I wanted her to realize, first of all, sweetheart, you're not the first one that ever had this happen. It is absolutely from the devil that yeah. he tries to frighten us and all. And as we began to talk to her, the Lord began to reveal a few things, and one of them, I told her, I said, that, you know, special place. God has something for you. Right. And the devil knows that. And right. he is trying to discourage you before it ever unfolded. And I said, now, I want to tell you. And I'm telling you from one who's been there and a lot of people, you have to so bury this word. And the Bible was laying on the coffee table. And I, I said, this, this is what he feared. If you bury this in there, to leave you alone. You have to just believe it without blinking. And as you read it, and you read about the patriarchs and the, and the, the saints and all, I said, you find out, Reagan, that it's, it's for all of them. They all went through them. Everyone, if you, when you make the decision that you're going to try to live for God, and by living for him, I mean, you're going to trust him no matter what. No matter what you do or what happens in your life, you're going to trust him that somehow he can preserve you. I said, that is the key. And when you bury that in your heart and it's there and you realize, he said, I will never forsake you. Right. I'll never leave you. Right. I said, no. And, he, and then the scripture says, if God be for you, who can be against you? But I said, you just to hear it doesn't work. You've got to bury it down yes. deep inside. And once you do, those anxiety attacks will be gone yes. because he yes. cannot come right. against you. Right. He's trying to discourage you now. And I said, you you just have to, you know, Grandma and I wish we could do it for you. But every walk is individual. Yes. You're going to have your own things to face and all, but you got the same God that we all yes. trust in. You can yes. trust in him, and he will. Uh, it, was, it was exciting. It was thrilling. It made the day worth a day. It made it re you realize what's really important. Yeah. Certainly not a football game. Yeah, that flood was right in my little town of Union, Missouri. It was all on the news, but thank God I talked to a lot of my friends and no one was harmed or injured and uh, a lot of things wiped out. Don't know if the town's going to recover, but there's always a way. But you know, the Lord's just so good. Um, <clears throat> he's so faithful. I, I just recently uh, got a call from this lady from Ken due to cancer and asked me if I would uh, come and start cleaning for them. They'll pay me just a little bit of money, not compared to what I usually get. But cancer, of course, is close to my heart with my mother having had it three times. And so I went to the first house of the lady who has breast cancer, and she has three little kids. And I've never met her. I've talked to her on the phone. She's like, I wish I could meet you. So I was like, 
just kind of started sharing Jane's story and started sharing faith with her. And, and so I was like cleaning the house and I'm looking and seeing these three little kids, you know, with the pictures on the wall. And I just started praying over her house. I, you know, so I think, well, Lord, there's a reason and a purpose that, you know, this company called me. And so if nothing else, if I never meet the lady, I can at least anoint her house and, and pray blessings upon them. So, you know, if doors open, whatever that we walk through, I just pray that the Lord will somehow use us as a tool to be able to minister life into these people's lives, you know, and, and, and hope and yes. give them some, something to look forward to. So yes. just as I go into this new, new area here, <coughs> that, you know, the Lord would just allow me to be able to minister effectively to people that are definitely in pain, hurting, and don't know what tomorrow holds. In Jesus' yes. name. In Jesus' name. Yes. Yes. like they were saying, we can't because we know what he's done and uh, they couldn't be quiet because they saw the things that he did. You know, they knew what, what uh, a new life was in him and how that he made such a difference. And you just can't be contained. You can't be quieted down. And uh, it's the same thing with, uh, <coughs> with the witness inside of you. You know, it's alive. It's part of God. And it's not going to be silenced. And uh, not going to be defeated. I just thank God that we have a fellowship here of uh, believers that walk in this way and just know that we can build each other up, we can encourage each other, and just carry on for the Lord that he's got greater places for us to go to than we can even know and can imagine. So I just thank God that uh, there's just not only a new year, but it's a new life it's newer every day, you know, and uh, the blessings of God, and I just want to give God the glory. Thank you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Christmas time uh, with the flu and stuff, so they didn't have Christmas, so that's where they're at right now, playing Chris Christmas uh, catch-up with the family and all that fun thing, so like I said, <coughs> watch over them and, and bless them also yeah. in this new year. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Thank you, Brother Tim. You're always a blessing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As we said last year and the year before, Happy New You. No, she always got it. She always got it. Hallelujah. 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 Go on. Let's worship him. For he alone is worthy. It's all about you, Lord.
happen yet. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sing hallelujah. Huh? Sing hallelujah. Let's shake the snow off the roof, okay? <laughs>
nothing can separate us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate us, Lord. Nothing can separate us from your love, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glorify, magnify your name. You alone are worthy, 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 Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you for bringing us through another year, Lord. Another year of revelation, Lord. Things are coming clearer and clearer and, and clearer, Lord. Hallelujah, dreams and visions, Lord. On your old ones and your young ones, Lord. On your manservants and your maidservants, Lord. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. 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 Lift up your voice and worship him. He is worthy, Lord. We walk on water. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory to your name. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory, glory to your name. love you this morning, Lord. Be magnified. Be lifted high. Oh, we love you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for all the blessings, all the battles that made us stronger, all of the victories that came through this last year. Thank you for getting us to 2016. And thank you for giving us a vision and a purpose and a plan for this year, this new year. We turn the page, and it's blank, Lord. Fill it with your kingdom. Fill it with your purpose. Fill it with your plan. As we look to you, the author and finisher of our faith, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, worship. <laughs> Always so funny saying that. Yeah. Oh, I love to worship in this house. Yes. It does seem pretentious when I say that. Oh, such a joy to worship together with all of you. Oh. So, here we are, 2016. <laughs> I don't know about any of you, but I'm glad 2015 is over. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And, um, as I was praying about what's on the Lord's heart for today, it makes me a little nervous because Wednesday night he did a little switcheroo on me, so I know it's and I'm praying I get to use them. <laughs> but there's one thing that keeps coming back around, keeps coming back around, keeps coming back around through conversations, through prayer, through scripture, through Facebook, through everywhere I look, it keeps coming back around to this one thing. Oh, it's this one thing. Um, <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> Ever since we went to the Kingdom House of Prayer in Ankeny, I keep going back to this one prophetic word that the Lord gave when um, I was out praying. Um, so I was praying for uh, Rick, who is kind of, the, he's, the, he's in charge of Kingdom House of Prayer. He's kind of does the 24 hour prayer burn. And I was just going around the room. Um, Mike knew that there was some ministry that God wanted to do, and he released all those that were there praying to minister. And they kind of looked at him like, huh? <laughs> and so I looked at him and he's like, yeah, go. Because <laughs> it was mostly women. So I went around the room and was praying for everybody. And God had amazing words for everybody. And it's one of those moments where I don't even know what I said half the time, quite honestly, <laughs> because it wasn't me. It was just flowing. Like the spirit was moving. And God was telling all the, the young men that they were mighty men of valor. And he was telling these women that, that every one of their tears had not been in vain. Every moment in their prayer closets had not been in vain. And God heard. And just encouraging and uplifting. And I was just, whoa, I was getting more pumped up and more bold. And, and Rick was already out. <laughs> he was already flat on the floor when I got up to him. And he was just kind of coming back around. And um, 
it was funny afterwards to see what he wrote about that part on Facebook. He's like, who what, I don't remember what he said, but something about it's flowing deep or something like, it, the pre yeah, it was on, basically, it was on. <laughs> and uh, I laid my hands on him, and I'm not sure where I started, but all of a sudden I just saw so clearly this river that was just gushing from him. And I was like, cool, you know, like I, I'm, I see things sometimes and I don't, the kids always ask me, what do you mean you see? And I'm like, well, it's kind of like having a daydream while you're awake. <laughs> I don't know, I just see. Yeah. And this river was coming from him. And I immediately thought about John 7, 38 and 39. that says, he that believeth on me, as the scripture hath said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. But this spake he of the spirit, which they that believed on him should receive, that we now have. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given at that time, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Well, that river is in us, and that river is flowing. But as soon as I was thinking about this cool river, then I realized it wasn't a river made of water. It was a river that was made of oil, and it was on fire. It was something to behold, like this raging river, right? <laughs> a song that Mike Fox just wrote called The Raging River, but it was on fire. I've never seen a river on fire. Like it is a overflowing at the Banks River, but it's on fire and it's made of oil. And this oil was soaking and saturating everywhere it went. Water dries up, but oil, it stays and it saturates. And the fire, oh, I'm sorry, the, the, the oil was so soaking and saturating everywhere it went. And I thought of the Balm of Gilead. I've, I've heard songs about that. I didn't know what it was, so I looked it up. Um, Gilead was a town, and it was famous for its healing ointment. So the Balm of Gilead is healing. The oil that heals, the ointments that heal. And so this healing ointment, it was healing for the heart, the mind, the body, and the soul. And this river was bringing healing everywhere it went. And it was on fire. And I'd never seen a river on fire before, but this fire was different. This fire wasn't destroying, but it was purging and it was cleansing. And it was changing the atmosphere everywhere it went. <coughs> it stayed with its source of fuel, the river. Our God is a consuming fire. And I immediately thought of Zechariah chapter 4. The Lord keeps taking me back to Zechariah chapter 4, and I'm still not sure <laughs> um, everything. But this is a powerful ver uh, section of scripture. Zechariah chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. And the angel that talked with me came again and waked me as a man that is wakened out of his sleep. And he said unto me, What seest thou? And I said, I have looked, and behold, a candlestick, all of gold, with a bowl upon the top of it, and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked to me, saying, What are these, my lord? And the angel that talked with me answered and said to me, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto, unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Where art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, Grace grace unto it. Amen. That scripture gives me goosebumps, and I don't even have all the insight into what's going on right there, but all we need to know is shout grace, grace unto it. Yes. Not by power, not by might, but by his spirit. Yes. But his spirit is in us, and if we aren't speaking the words of the spirit, the spirit has no voice. So I don't think, well now I would say I know for sure that that word wasn't just for the recipient. It was for all of us. For all of us who have been hungering and thirsting after the kingdom of God to be released. Matthew 6, 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I'm ready for all these things to be added. All of them to be added. We have sought the kingdom of God together this past year and for many years before that. We have been releasing the river of God to flow down from heaven to earth. The oil of the Spirit is here. Yes. 
the oil, the river of worship. The river of oil is released through our worship. I've often wondered, what is it about worshiping the Lord that is so powerful, so life-changing, so uplifting, so encouraging? Every time I put on my bass guitar and every time I open my mouth to sing, I'm open up, we're opening up our heart to the Lord. I'm opening my heart to the Lord. Yes. I'm exposing the depths of my heart, my soul, my mind, and my desires to glorify God, to lift up the name of Jesus, the name above all names. But yet somehow, when I most want to bless God, I'm the one getting blessed. We are the ones who are transformed from our worship. He is unchanging. He loves and treasures our worship, but we receive the blessing of it. Our God is so good. And it's almost selfish how much I love to work. I look forward to our Eastern Gate House of Prayer, two hours of just pure joy. Pure worship, pure release, just following after God. Doesn't matter what it sounds like, doesn't matter what's said, just chasing after him and something special happens in those moments. We're changing ourselves. We're changing the atmosphere. We're releasing something that's probably never been spoken before. But we have to be here and we have to open our mouths. And that word has to be buried in our heart. It's just like you said. That word has to be buried in our heart and that word has to come out. That's when it bears fruit. And our worship in this place is special. We've all been to those mega churches, those huge churches that can't hold a candle to the presence of the Lord in this house. It makes no sense, but it makes perfect sense. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And there's a new sound that's come out of this place, a new sound. People have come here for Tom Stamen meetings, and, and after, afterwards downstairs over cookies, they're like, um, I kept looking at the platform and counting the number of people singing, but it didn't really match what I was hearing. Are there like angels singing with you guys or something? Why, yes, yes, there are. <laughs> we have a large angel in the back who watches over us and protects us and probably joins in. There is a sound, there's something special. And we have to be thankful for what has been the Lord's not done. That's what has just established. That's the foundation. That's the beginning. That's the, the down payment of what he wants to release. Are we ready for God to release a new thing? If what he's done already has been so amazing, can our hearts even imagine what's next? Oh, it's fun to imagine. It's fun to dream. I don't know that I can even see it, and I'm a big dreamer. <laughs> and Nathan rolls his eyes at me sometimes. Okay, Suzanne, I'm a big dreamer. I've said it, and I've said it, and I've said it, and I've said it, and you guys are going to get tired of hearing me say it, but it bears repeating. We are entering a season of manifestation, the likes of which we have never seen. We need to expect to see things with our own eyes, to speak and see things change, to, to walk into the room and see the dead rise. I'm talking about things that we cannot even imagine. You know, if I can't, if I can't, heal, if I can't get healed of a cold, how am I going to walk into a room and see the dead rise? I'm not going to do it. God is, because he does. He is resurrection power. Yes. And I can personally say that just in the last few weeks, the Lord has been increasing the release of his gifts. Personally, and I know I'm not alone, and the intensity of these gifts are overwhelming. Like, we're praying at the beginning of a Wednesday night service, and I'm bawling because I'm just overwhelmed right. with what God is showing. Right. Right. A couple Wednesdays ago, I was overwhelmed with a sense of gratitude and thanksgiving. And I don't even remember what, I don't remember who opened, I don't remember what was going on. We were just praying our normal prayer at the opening of the service. And the weight was lifted. The burden that I didn't even know I had been carrying, physically, I felt, I don't know if you've ever carried something heavy and then you put it down and you feel weightless. Yeah. You feel like you're floating. Right. Oh, that burden had been lifted physically. I felt like I was floating. Mm -hmm. I was free. Yes. And I was overwhelmed with a feeling of peace and well-being that brought me to gratitude, tears of gratitude. I was so thankful. I didn't even know I was carrying weights. I thought I was doing good. I thought things were great, you know? But we carry things, worries, doubts, unbelief, whatever they are. Our need to control our, our, the pressures of the world, our life, work, balance, kids, relationships, families, whatever. Christmas stress, good night. Yeah. Can I get an amen from all the women? Christmas stress. You guys, just ask your wives what it means. 
I mean, this world, we put so much on ourselves and we expect so much from ourselves, but it's not ours to do that heavy lifting. Right. And there's such a shift going on right now that when we let go of those burdens, when we just receive that peace, then we can be ready for anything. If we're bogged down, we can't just move as the Spirit leads. And I'm telling you, we need to be ready to move and follow after the Lord. Wednesday, as I said, I was seeking the Lord for what to share during the opening of the service, and I was torn. I just, I kept reading scripture and kept reading, and nothing, usually something just jumps out, and it's so clear. And I'm like, am I not hearing? Like, what's going on, Lord? Are you, it's always talking to me. What's going on? So I made some notes, kept reading and praying, made some notes, and thought, well, let's go here. He'll let me, you know. I had the most scriptures about that one topic, and then I got here, and before the end of the first worship practice, first two minutes of the song, I'm like, well, Throw that out the window. That's not where the Lord is. But do we have eyes to see? Do we have ears to hear? I can't help but feeling it was a little bit of a test. Am I going to use my notes that are well thought out, that I have the scriptures reread, I already know where I'm going, or am I just going to say, you know what, Lord, I know what you want to talk about, and start with one scripture and open my mouth. And you know what the one scripture was? My house shall be called a house of prayer. My father's house shall be called a house of prayer. All I know is this. We have got to be led by the Holy Spirit. We have got to have eyes to see and ears to hear, or we're going to miss what the Lord wants to do in these, in these last days. And I'm so thankful to be part of a church that is hungering and thirsting for the kingdom of God. I'm so thankful for a pastor that is a man after God's own heart, who speaks truth in love, who speaks grace, who speaks an abundant life, and to all of us, each time he stands before us. I'm thankful for a worship leader who desires to glorify God first above all else, who has an ear to hear, and who relentlessly and passionately pursues God. I am so thankful to be a member of this body, this church, and this place, and this time, who isn't afraid to do things differently, who lets God lead the way, and we just trust him and we worship him together. But God has more. God has more. There are members of our body that aren't here. There are members of our body who don't even know they're supposed to be here. And there are members of our body who know darn well they're supposed to be here. But for whatever reason, something's holding them back. And we all have to do our parts. It's going to take every single one of us for what God wants to do. It's not going to be about this person or that person or that person or this person. Our pastor can't be everything to everyone. Mike can't be everything to everyone. Nobody can, and that's too much to ask. But we all have ministries, and when we reveal the Lord together, it's a more complete and full picture. Amen. So, back to the river of fire. I didn't realize what the fire was in the river until I was talking to Shelly after church a couple weeks back for the puppet show. <laughs> Shelly, we were just visiting, we were catching up, she had just gotten back to Iowa. And she made a comment. She says, I like to set fires and watch them burn. <laughs> well, Woo! now, taken out of context, that might be a little, <laughs> that might be taken a little, uh, <laughs> might be, seem a little alarming <laughs> if you take that out of context. But as soon as she said that, I knew that the fire on the, rep on the river represented the prayers of the people, the spoken words of our, that's all prayer is, is a spoken word. That's the fire. That's the spark. That's what changes things. And that oil is the fuel that fires those words. So it's no coincidence that as we begin 2016, the Lord was very clear Wednesday night what his heart is for this new year. Matthew 21, 13, and he said unto them, it is written, my house shall be called the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves. This house is a house of prayer. Right. You, every one of you, are a house of prayer. Right. You are the temple of the living God. Right. And you know what happened right after he cleansed the temple and he declared it a house of prayer? <coughs> Matthew 21, 14. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple and he healed them. Yes. When we declare the lame walk and the blind see, and Peter spoke divine truth to us on Wednesday night. He said, we ask for too little. I'm paraphrasing Peter. 
We ask for too little. We don't ask God for enough. And he's right. We need to open our hearts and we need to dream God dreams. Where is our dreams? Where is our, our thoughts, our imagination? We need to be fully convinced that God wants to do more. The door is open. Mike put it in the PowerPoint. It's true. <laughs> the door is open. And what he said Wednesday night is God wants to do the more. What's the more? It's more than what you can think, more than what you can ask. He wants to do more. But we've got to walk through that door. We've got to imagine it. We've got to speak it. We've got to find it in the word, and we've got to pray about it, and we've got to speak it. And we have to believe it. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. We all know this one. Ephesians 3, 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in who? Us. Who? Us. us. The power is in us. That river of fire is in us to be released, waiting, waiting. We have got to do our part. We've got to be willing. We've got to be bold. And we've got to know what our part is. What are your gifts and callings? Fire up. Getting bossy. <laughs> Remember, Jesus already told us what our part is. It's really quite simple. Matthew 6, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. That's all we have to do, kids. Yes. Seek him first. Yes. Seek him first. Yes. And his righteousness. And just rest. Yep. And he does all the rest. Yes. What is God's part? He will do anything. <coughs> everything that is exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. Yes. He does the more. Yes. He does the more. He does the ab abundantly. I love it that it says abundantly. Yep. Abundantly. Abundant life. Yes. He does abundantly more. Are you hearing me? <laughs> we simply seek God. We open our mouths and we speak his word that he already gave us. We speak it back to him, and he releases the kingdom of God. Yeah. It's really that simple. But we have to ask. We have to open our mouths and speak the word of God that's in our hearts. We have to speak it back to him, fully convinced that he will do more than anything we can ever ask or think. It's no coincidence that I finally got to see the movie War Room on Friday for the first time. Anybody who hasn't seen it, I'll give you a dollar and go get it on Redbox. <laughs> Uh, has anybody not seen it? What? Uh, War Room. Yeah. Oh, buddy. <laughs> I, would, I had no idea what I was in for. Have a box of Kleenex and a notepad and a pen. <laughs> I took three pages of notes in the first 20 minutes of this movie. I'm not even joking. Wow. So, seriously, get, I'll give you a dollar. Go get it in Redbox. It's a dollar in Redbox. <laughs> Miss Clara is the main character. Her husband was in the military, and she learned about how their war room, the place where they laid out their battle strategies, how it worked to win the war. Her war room was an empty closet where she posted scriptures and prayers and where she spent time alone with the Lord doing battle and winning the war. There are so many nuggets of truth in this movie, but I'm going to give you Suzanne's cliff notes for the highlight reel. <laughs> we must have a prayer strategy for every area of our life. Prayer is just part of our everyday routine, but I've never thought about laying out a strategy, writing it down, having a plan. I'm a planner. I can't believe I've never actually had a plan. I got post-it notes, but that's not a plan. I'm talking about we need to, to think about, Lord, where do I need more in my life? Where do I need more in my life? And write it down. Find the scriptures, write them down, and you pray them until you've got more, and then you write down another one. And people, all around us, there's always a need. There's always something. But it's a deliberate, intentional strategy where we're speaking back the word and we're seeing the circumstances change, not just when it pops up, right. but being intentional and fighting the battle in our way and our time with God going before us. Yes. God wants us to pray with intent and with purpose. Search the scriptures, write down your war strategy from the word of God and keep it where you can see it when you pray. Number two, there is a righteous warrior in all of us that needs to be awakened. Come on. 
I don't care if you've known the Lord for 50 years or five minutes. We need to warrior up for these last days. And I'm not talking about when the heat comes and when the battle's raging. I'm talking about being a warrior who prepares every single day. I am the daughter of a sailor, sailor and the wife of a soldier. I know all about battle plans. They clean their weapons every single day. They sharpen their swords every single day. They know the plan every day. They drill every day. They don't get a day off. It is 24-7, seven days a week. And when there's a war, when there's a war, you know every, uh, uh, yeah, anyway, strategy. <laughs> get me going. Warrior up. We have many moments of divine warfare, but I'm talking about consistently engaging the enemy on all fronts. I'm talking about revising our strategy with new wisdom as new circumstances arise every single day. The enemy never quits. He doesn't ever stop seeking whom he may devour. Number three, we need to bring the fire back to our fight. Whew. Oh, this movie's good, guys. I'm telling you, if you haven't seen it, Red Box, a dollar. <laughs> bring the fire back to your fight. Yes. We must make it a daily focus, for our enemy never rests. He is always roaming to seek whom he may devour. We may think we don't have extra time, but as Miss Clara would tell you, but you've got time to fight losing battles every single day. Yes. Where are we losing? Where are our defenses needing to be reinforced? Where, are, in our family, in our realm, in this family, in our church family, in our relationships, in our work, where are our defenses right. failing? Where do we need a strategy? Where do we need backup? Where do we need to call and phone a friend? It's not 50-50, it's phone a friend. We can all pray for each other. Number four, it's not our job to do the heavy lifting. Only God can do that. I have tried and tried and wore myself out and tried and tried and tried and tried to do it all. We can't. Our job is to seek him, to trust him, and to stand on his word. We need to get out of the way and let God do it. Yes. If we can just rest and trust in him. And last, her words of wisdom, do your fighting with the word of God. Yes. His word will not come back to him void. I'll never forget the first time I met a man whose sword scared me. <laughs> I was in a outside of Bemidji, Minnesota, in like a little community for a part of a ministry, prophetic school, I don't know, I, wherever I went, I don't know. Um, and, I, and, they, and they lived in this little community, and um, Arthur Katz was the name of the minister there, the um, Jewish man who had fulfilled his faith as a Jewish man and, and had Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And I read his book called The Spirit of Truth. And I remember thinking, I've never read anything that just went, Funk. truth, not truth. And it was so like black and white. There was no gray in any of his writings. And I was really moved by his ministry. And so I went to his prophetic school that he did every summer. And it was one of those meals. And um, I had a you know, tray of food. And I sat down. I sat down next to one of the gentlemen that lived there. And I just, we started talking. And within 30 seconds, I looked at him. And my heart was just pounding. And I'm just like, I don't think I can eat next to you. <laughs> and he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, your spirit of truth is too strong. <laughs> like, I, I don't know how to, he was, he was a mighty man. You know what I mean? Have you ever met someone who you just was like, I'm not up to par and I'm not ready for you to read my mail, so I'll get back to you. <laughs> Let me go pray for a minute and I'll get back to you. And I, I, it made such an impression on me. I couldn't eat. Like I, I just, I wanted to go pray and read the word. Like I was so moved and I just thought, this is a man who spends more time with God than with people. Yeah. That was the first thing that I thought. And I just thought, wow. He just knows God way better than I do. And I want, and it, and it scared me a little bit because it was intimidating because I really did feel like he could read my mail. But, um, but he left an impression. Not that I want people to be scared, but I want them to know that I'm a friend of God. Yeah. That he and I are like that, that I spend more time with him than I do with people. I can't say that. Right. He's with me always, but am I with him always? Right. Is he in the forefront of my mind always? Right. Anyway, so, Miss Clara. She's right on. We need to bring back the fire to our fight in this house. So here's some scriptures that I wrote down about the power of prayer. I'm going to rattle a bunch of scriptures, Sheila. So you ready? All right. First one, Mark 11, 24. Therefore, 
therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Is that sound complicated? Nope. Matthew 6, 7. And don't take this personally, Gentiles. <laughs> Matthew 6, 7. But when you pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Let's not use empty words. Let's not use corruptible words. Nathan taught about everything that's not of God is corruptible. And the Bible talks about corrupt speech. It's not used in profane language. It's used in speaking anything that's not the word of God. When we pray, we need to pray the word of God. That is the power of our prayer. Come on. Number three. Um, oh, you can't see my number three, Sheila. Uh, John 15, 7. John 15, 7. If ye abide in me, and my words abide in you, ye shall ask what ye, get, what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Yes. Abide. We need to abide. We need to make our habitat, make our home right. in the presence of the Lord. John 14, 13 through 14. John 14, 13 through 14. And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If, sh if ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. You need to ask in the name of Jesus. Uh, let's see, Matthew 21, 21 through 22. Matthew 21, verses 21 through 22. Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever ye shall ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. Everybody say, all things. Amen. All things. Amen. Doubt not. We need to remove doubt from our prayer life. Um, let's see, 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 through 15. 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 through 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. If we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him, our confidence. What's the will of God? His word. We don't have to wonder, is it the will of God? Is it not the will of God? We are not wandering aimlessly waiting for the will of God to be revealed. His word is his will. When we pray his word, we know the answer. We're giving him the answer so he can give it back to us and he can do the more. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. This is a hard one. It sounds great in theory, but it's a hard one. Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 through 7. Be careful for nothing. Another version says be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. It's hard to not worry. It's hard to not get anxious over situations that are right in our face. But when we just trust the Lord, when we have that word in our heart and it's on our tongue immediately, And it's all done. James chapter 5, verse 16. Confess your faults one to another, and pray one for another, that ye may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Are we righteous? Can I get righteous? I receive righteous. I can't get righteous. I receive righteous. Righteousness is a gift. So you just have to receive the gift right. and your pr effectual, fervent prayer. That means we are relentless. That means that we don't stop and we, don't, we keep <coughs> reminding God. We keep, and honestly, we're not reminding God, we're reminding ourselves. Right. When we pray, we're hearing. Faith comes by hearing right. our words, not just, a, not just other people's words. But when we speak, we hear our own words. We speak in our ears and our faith is increased by our own words. Right. All right, so when, where do we pray? Uh, 1 Timothy 2, 8. 
This is where we pray. Uh, 1 Timothy 2.8. I, I will, therefore, that men pray everywhere, lifting up holy hands without wrath and doubting. Where do we pray? Everywhere. everywhere. When do we pray? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. Yeah. Ephesians 6, verse 8. When do we pray? Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same he shall receive of the Lord. No, that's not the right one. Um, Ephesians 6, 8. Is that right? Okay, well, uh, it's supposed to be pray at all times. <laughs> I must have written that down wrong. First uh, Thessalonians 5, 17. This is also when we pray. Pray without ceasing. All the time, never stop. How do we pray? Romans 8, 26. <coughs> Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. <coughs> How do we pray? By the Spirit. Amen. It is so important to speak in tongues. Yes. There are things that we really don't know, that maybe, maybe we're so moved, or maybe we don't even know. Maybe we just know that we're supposed to pray for someone and don't know why. Right. Pray in your prayer language. Let the Spirit pray. Yes. Right. And if you don't have the Holy Spirit, then, by gosh, seek it. Yes. Yes. It is essential yes. to, the, to opening the keys of the kingdom. Yes. Um, what do we pray? And this is Matthew 6, 9 through 13. This is the Lord's Prayer. Matthew 6. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, we know who we're praying, to, praying to, hallowed be thy name. We glorify God. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Speak out his word up to heaven so it can come back down to earth. Give us this day our daily bread. He is our bread. We have to be hungry, and we have to ask for it. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Whoo, that's a hard one. I can ask for forgiveness all day long, but can I give it? And it's not only giving forgiveness, it's forgetting. It's really hard for us to forget. And lead us not into temptation, thank you, Lord, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. He's showing us how to pray, yes. what to pray. And so as we look forward to the new year, there's a couple of things I want us to pray for as a body. We need to pray for our pastor. Yes. We need to pray for Nathan. For, for I have three things that I think that I want to start with. For protection. 2 Corinthians 10.4. 10.4, good buddy. 2 <laughs> Corinthians 10.4. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Our pastor deals with things that we don't. He is the head of this church, and he bears a lot of responsibility, and we need to do warfare on his part for him. <coughs> uh, Philipp Philippians 4, 7. And the peace of God, which passeth, passeth can't say that. Understanding shall keep your hearts and your minds through Jesus Christ. I pray for peace for our pastor. Yes. Peace that passes all understanding. And that peace will guard his heart and his mind. Yes. I pray that he preaches the gospel with boldness and power. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. That he preaches the gospel with boldness and power. 1 Corinthians 2, 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. That's my prayer for our yes. pastor. Yes. <coughs> and lastly, for continued wisdom and revelation. Yes. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And James chapter 1, verse 5. James 1, verse 5. 
And if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. It's not just for ourselves, we can ask for wisdom for our pastor. And also I want us to pray for each other. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. tells us who we're supposed to pray for. I exhort, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayers, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for who? All men. All of us. We need to pray for every single one of us. Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 through 12. Ecclesiastes 4, verses 9 through 12. Sorry, James. <laughs> Let's be boring, yeah? <laughs> Two are better than one. Can I get an amen? Two are better than one. Because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? Oh, we need each other. We are not intended to do this alone. Whether you're single, whether you're married... Sometimes it doesn't matter. We need each other. We need to bind together. Matthew 18, verse 19. Matthew 18, 19. Matthew 18, 19. And again I say unto you that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything, Anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Anything. Romans 15, 13. Now the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. And I wrote it down wrong again apparently. That is to strive together. <laughs> It's a good scripture, but not the one I wrote down. We are to strive together. There is a striving that has to come. There is some effort on our part. There is a time commitment. There is a commitment to search the scriptures, to write things down. We have to do our part, but we do it together. Uh, Philippians chapter 1, verses 9 through 11. I hope I got this one right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I wrote these down by hand. Usually I copy them out of the... Uh, it's Philippians 1, 9 through 11. And this I pray, this is our prayer for each other, and this we pray, that our love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in, judge, and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. And uh, lastly, 2 Timothy verse 1, 6-7, I'm going to read that out of the Amplified. We all have different gifts and abilities. Uh, 2 Timothy verse 1, 6 through 7, but I'm going to read it out of the Amplified because it's a little more expansive. That is why I would remind you to stir up, to <coughs> rekindle the embers, to fan the flames of, and to keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that is in you by means of the laying on of hands with those of the elders at your ordaining, ordination. If anybody hasn't been ordained, we'll just, when we pray, that's our ordination. For God did not give us the spirit of timidity, of cowardice, of craven and cringing and fawning fear, but he has given us the spirit of power and of love and of calm and well-balanced mind and discipline and self-control. We are to stir up the gift. We have to do that. Someone else can't do it for us. We can just come here and we can be stirred up, but we have to intentionally fan that flame. We all have different things that move us. We all have different things that, that stir it. We have different gifts that need different anointings, different prayers, different activities, whatever it might be. But we must be stirred up. God wants to do a new thing. And as I said Wednesday night, it occurred to me, uh, Mike was praying about, we don't want the revivals of old. There have been amazing revivals, right? There have been amazing outpourings. And I was thinking about it, and I thought, well, God has poured out his fire, like he did in Brownsville, and he's poured out the river, it'd be like the outpouring in Toronto. But there's never been a place where he did both at the same time, right. where there was a river on fire, where there was an outpouring 
of fire and oil. It's never happened. And God's talking crazy to me right now. <laughs> He's showing me things that I don't always understand, but I know that they're true, and I know that they're things that he wants for us for right now. And as I was typing all this up last <coughs> night, I was thinking about the harp and bowl ministry, and I had some thoughts about what the Lord was trying to tell me, and he made it very clear that I was way off track. Uh, but but in, in the house of prayer, the, um, the house of prayer down in Kansas City, that's where these 24-hour prayer, um, uh, worship and prayer kind of movement started. And I think there's coming a shift there too. The Lord showed me um, the prophets with their harps, right? The prophetic worshipers and the priests with their bowls, the intercessors that held the prayers of the people. And I was reminded that in order for the current harp and bowl model to work, you had to be one or the other. You were either the harp, the prophetic worshiper, or you were the bowl, you were the intercessor, and that you had to go to the temple to minister. But I see the Lord pouring out those bowls, and I see the Lord lighting those harps on fire. We are called to be both the harp and the bowl, the worshiper and the intercessor. And God does not want his ministry contained inside any building. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Wherever we go, we bring God's raging river, the river of oil and fire, a river of worship and a river of prayer. The dams that have been holding back this river are open. The river of God flows freely to whosoever it will. Are we willing to let go and let it flow in our lives? To let it bring healing, to let it bring deliverance, to let it bring prosperity, to let it bring reconciliation? We have to hone our gifts and our callings. We have to seek God for wisdom and revelation. We have to open our eyes and we have to open our ears and we have to be willing to be led by the Holy Spirit. The river, the river of God flows through the darkness, lighting up the atmosphere wherever it goes. I hear that song that's not really a Christian song. Light them up, 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 up. Light them up, up, up. I'm on fire! Yeah. Isn't that, cool? that cool? No. I watched Pitch Perfect 2. <laughs> Light them up. Yeah. I'm on fire. Right. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This thing cannot be contained. Wow. I know, I'm on fire. I don't remember. I was like, oh my God, I can't believe she did that. We need to let the river of God set fire to our hearts. Yes. And we need to let that fire have its way. We are soaked. We are ready. We just need that spark. Yeah. But that spark has to come from our own lips. That spark has to come from the lips of each other. And that spark becomes a fire. You know, Peter gave that word, um, I don't know how long ago, and he said that it's no coincidence that these people are coming to Iowa. Right now, as we're beginning 2016, and we're talking about prayer, and they're coming for a prayer. He's going on, whatever. And he said that he saw the Lord searching all over the United States. And it was a Friday night where I don't think there were but like maybe six of us here. And he said that, the Lord stopped here in this house because they saw a little ember of fire. But he knew that he was welcome here. Do you know how important that is for when God passes over your house? Right. To know he is welcome there. Right. But he stopped here and he fanned that flame and that little tiny ember. Yes. This place in Iowa that was called the twice burnt over field that everybody's turned their back on, that now suddenly the prophetic voices in our nation are going, hmm, something's going on in Iowa. What's going on in Iowa? God is fanning that flame. But we have to do our own part. Yes. There's houses of prayer. Somebody that I was in the state for seniors in Jasper with in 1992, her and her husband opened a house of prayer in Burlington, where Pam is from, where, where um, yeah, Mark, thank you, uh, where they just moved. It's not coincidence. This, river to river, right? This is not coincidence. Our God does not have coincidences. Yeah. God is establishing a divine network. Yes. And there is something going on in Iowa that is making everybody else go, what? Iowa? They're farmers, Sanford says, with yeah. tippy cows. What up? Don't take them seriously. They're a joke. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord says, but they are welcoming me. Yes. They are seeking me, and they will not let the fire burn out. Right. Fire transforms the molecular structure of that which it consumes. Our God makes all things new. Just like you said, Roberto. 2 Corinthians 5.17. Roberto talked about this a little bit on Wednesday night. 
2 Corinthians 5.17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Mm-hmm. Ephesians, 4, cha- uh, chapter, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 21 through 24. Ephesians 4, 21 through 24. <clears throat> If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. That fire consumes our flesh. It consumes the old man. It consumes the purposes and plans of the enemy and it releases and transforms and releases the new thing, the kingdom of God for victory and all the blessings that are the inalienable rights of its citizen. We as citizens of the kingdom of God have inalienable rights that the enemy has been stealing from us. But when we let that fire of prayer, when that fire comes back to our fight, that fire consumes our corruptible speech and we speak forth the kingdom, and things change. The new man is released. And I found this Mother Teresa quote, and I was very confused by it at first when I read it. Mother Teresa said, I used to believe that prayer changes things, but now I know that prayer changes us, and we change things. Oh, if we can understand that. I'm not asking God to do it. I'm asking God to give me the wisdom so I can speak his truth. We are the ones that have to give voice to the Holy Spirit. We are the hands and the feet of Jesus Christ in this earth. And unless we are willing to have eyes and to have ears, the Holy Spirit has no voice. Jesus can't move. He can't have his way. We have to be, a, we have to allow ourselves to be changed, to let the new man arise and to put the old to death. And that fire transforms. Our molecular structure is different. How many of you had that, I, I don't know about you guys, and I didn't even know it had a name until Peter, somebody put something on Facebook, I don't remember what it was called even, but when I was baptized, I didn't know anything. A what? A du- I had a double baptism, I didn't know it, I didn't know how to name it. I'm looking at this pastor, who I've met twice in my life, and he's starting to say the words, and the Holy Spirit was so powerful, and I'm looking at him, he, I'm crying, he's crying, and they and he, you know, dunks me and lifts me up. I got women all around me speaking in tongues. I don't even know what that is yet. And he throws my hands up, and it was like lightning through my fingertips, down to my toes, and back out. I couldn't stand. I, I think I was supposed to talk in tongues. I didn't know to open my mouth. I mean, it was powerful. But it was God's way of letting me know I was new. I was different. I was a new creature because I needed to know. I needed to know that I was not the same. You are not the same the minute that you gave your life to Christ, the minute that you laid down the old man, whatever it was, it doesn't have to be in a baptism, but the minute you let the old man die and you let the new man rise up, you are a new creature, a new creation. Oh, and the devil trembles. He trembles. When you speak, the dead will rise. When you speak, nations are free. Are you ready for what God has in 2016? Let us begin by setting up our war rooms at home, here at Abundant Life, at Eastern Gate House of Prayer. Let us start by letting go of the past and seeking the kingdom of God like we never have before. Let's pray for our pastor every day. Let's pray for the gifts and the callings of every member of this body to be strengthened, to give us boldness to step out in faith like never before. This whole thing started with the scripture written down on a piece of plastic on an overhead projector in a trailer park in Des Moines, Iowa. We went, and it's happening. To this day, it's happening. It blows my mind, because I got to write it down. (laughs) I was there, I got to write it down. And we had no idea what we were doing, but we wrote it down and we (laughs) believed that God wanted to tell us something. This is a cool scripture, it's a good place to start, right? Find it. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. That the eyes of your understanding, being enlightened, 
that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to usward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. Yeah. It's still going on. Yeah. It's still being revealed. And as we pray for Nathan, as we pray for each other, let's just watch and see how much God will change yeah. and how the kingdom of God will be released. Are you ready to take a ride on the raging yeah. river? Yeah. Bring a paddle, bring a raft, but come. Yeah. We need every one of you to walk boldly, to yeah. release the fullness of what God has for what he wants to do in this season. Yes. And you won't want to miss a moment of what God is doing. In Jesus' name. Yeah.